Hello everyone, welcome to Dentimedia YouTube channel. In this video, we will discuss about developmental disturbances in shape of teeth part 1. Let's get started. Germination, geminated teeth are anomalies which arise from an attempt at division of a single tooth germ by an invagination, with resultant incomplete formation of two teeth. The structure is usually one with two completely or incompletely separated crowns that have a single root and root canal. It is seen in deciduous as well as permanent dentition, and in some reported cases, appears to exhibit a hereditary tendency. It is not always possible to differentiate between gemination and a case in which there has been fusion between a normal tooth and a supernumerary tooth. Tooth count is normal when the anomalous tooth is counted as one. Higher frequency in the anterior and maxillary regions, the term twinning has sometimes been used to designate the production of equivalent structures by division resulting in one normal and one supernumerary tooth, fusion, fused teeth arise through union of two normally separated tooth germs. Depending upon the stage of development of the teeth at the time of the union, fusion may be either complete or incomplete, if the contact occurs early at least before calcification begins, the two teeth may be completely united to form a single large tooth. If the contact of teeth occurs later, when a portion of the tooth crown has completed its formation, there may be union of the roots only. Tooth count reveals a missing tooth when the anomalous tooth is counted as one. Higher frequency in the anterior and maxillary regions. Concrescence. Concrescence of teeth is actually a form of fusion which occurs after root formation has been completed. In this condition, teeth are united by cementum only. It is thought to arise as a result of traumatic injury or crowding of teeth with resorption of the interdental bone so that the two roots are in approximate contact and become fused by the deposition of cementum between them. The diagnosis can frequently be established by radiographic examination. The process is noted more frequently in the posterior and maxillary regions. Delaceration The term delaceration refers to an angulation, or a sharp bend or curve, in the root or crown of a formed tooth. The condition is thought to be due to trauma during the period in which the tooth is forming, with the result that the position of the calcified portion of the tooth is changed and the remainder of the tooth is formed at an angle. Of these teeth, the most commonly affected were the mandibular third molars, followed by the maxillary second premolars and mandibular second molars. The maxillary and mandibular incisors were the least frequently affected, representing approximately 1% of the series, talon cusp. The talon cusp, an anomalous structure resembling an eagle's talon, projects lingually from the cingulum areas of a maxillary or mandibular permanent incisor. IT extends at least half the distance from the cementoenamel junction to the incisal edge. If there is a closal interference, it should be removed but exposure of the pulp horn, necessitating endodontic therapy, is almost certain to occur. Dens in dente The dens in dente is a developmental variation which is thought to arise as a result of an invagination in the surface of tooth crown before calcification has occurred. The permanent maxillary lateral incisors are the teeth most frequently involved, and in the majority of cases the dens in dente appears to represent simply an accentuation in the development of the lingual pit. Ohlers described this condition thoroughly in three classic articles published from 1957 to 1958. Two forms, coronal and radicular, are recognized. Coronal dens in vaginatus teeth affected most often include the permanent lateral incisors, central incisors, premolars, canines, and molars. Involvement of deciduous teeth has been reported but is uncommon. A strong maxillary predominance is seen. The depth of the invagination varies from a slight enlargement of the cingulum pit to a deep infolding that extends to the apex. As would be expected, before eruption, the lumen of the invagination is filled with soft tissue similar to the dental follicle, i.e., reduced enamel epithelium with a fibrous connective tissue wall. On eruption, this soft tissue loses its vascular supply and becomes necrotic. 
Historically, coronal dens in vaginatus has been classified into three major types. Type 1 exhibits an invagination that is confined to the crown and does not extend beyond the level of the external cemento enamel junction. Type 2, the invagination is enamel lined and extends into the pulp chamber, but remains within the root canal with no communication with the periodontal ligament. Type 3a, the invagination extends through the root and communicates laterally with the periodontal ligament space through a pseudoforamen. There is usually no communication with the pulp, which lies compressed within the root. Type 3b, the invagination extends through the root and communicates with the periodontal ligament at the apical foramen. There is usually no communication with the pulp. Radicular dens invaginatus is rare and thought to arise secondary to a proliferation of Hertwig root sheath, with the formation of a strip of enamel that extends along the surface of the root. This pattern of enamel deposition is similar to that frequently seen in association with radicular enamel pearls, dens evaginatus. The dens evaginatus is a developmental condition that appears clinically as an accessory cusp or a globule of enamel on the occlusal surface between the buccal and lingual cusps of premolas, unilaterally or bilaterally, although it has been reported to occur rarely on molars, cuspids, and incisors. The pathogenesis of the lesion is thought to be the proliferation and evagination of an area of the inner enamel epithelium and subjacent odontogenic mesenchyme into the dental organ during early tooth development. The clinical significance of the condition is similar to that of the talon cusp, which it may physically resemble. This extra cusp may contribute to incomplete eruption displacement of teeth and slash or pulp exposure with subsequent infection following occlusal wear or fracture. Frequently, dens evaginatus is seen in association with another variation of coronal anatomy, shovel-shaped incisors. Dens evaginatus typically results in occlusal problems and often leads to pulpal death. In affected teeth, removal of the cusp often is indicated, but attempts to maintain vitality have met with only partial success, 